All right, guys, properties of rational exponents, okay? So what we're going to be dealing with is properties of exponents in general, which we should know already. And then rational exponents just means fraction exponents is what it means. Uh, so we're going to review our exponent properties. And then we'll put an example here beside that, that uh, particular property. So the first property is the most basic one and probably the one we use the most in algebra classes, and that's the multiplying property, where you have the same base. So the base is this part, so the base A with an exponent of M times something with the same base and an exponent of an N. Uh, the property, you know, if it's X squared times X to the third, what do you end up with? Yeah, because you do what with the exponents? You add them. So that, that's what that property says. Ah. He's acting a little dizzy today. So you add exponents. So an example uh, would be something like 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 1 half. That's 5 to the 1 half plus 1 half, which would be 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So that's just 5 to the first power. All that ends up being. Very simple example. We're going to obviously get much more difficult than that. But, but simple idea that if you're multiplying, the basis is the same, you're going to add the exponents. Uh, that one, the, the denominator was already the same. There may be a time, you know, we're going to add those exponents that the denominator's not the same, like two-thirds and a four-fifths or something like that, and we're going to deal with that. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, main thing right now is just reviewing some properties, okay? Next property is one that's used some in algebra classes, not quite as much as the first one, but it's still used uh, a good fair amount. So if you had a base with an exponent, and then it's in parentheses with an exponent outside, you multiply those exponents. So if you had something like 3 to the 5 over 2, all that raised to the second power, that ends up being 3 to the 5 over 2 times 2 over 1, which ends up being 3 to the 5th. And we could, that's a number, 3 to the 5th power is a nice number. You know, it's 243. I just happen to have that one memorized. Because I used it quite a bit. And you could get that with a calculator out of that. Here's the exponent form. So this would be exponent form. This would be standard form. That's the difference in that. You know, with asking for what kind of answer. If it asks for exponent form, we want like 3 to the 5th. If it asks for standard form, it means work out the numbers. Okay, that's what that means. So, real simple idea. Um, the next uh, property is, is very much related to property number two. It's when you have more than one thing inside the parentheses that are multiplied together. So, like, you got two different bases. Maybe you have A times B inside and then an exponent on the outside. All that means is, like, distributed property with exponents. You get an exponent. You know, these have a first power that's not written there. So it's A to the M times B to the M. So those are, you know, just distributed property with exponents is what that is. Uh, example that, that uses rational exponents might be you have 16 times 9 in parentheses, and that's raised to the one-half power. Well, that's 16 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half. But what is 16 to the 1 half power? Not 8, but 4, because half 1 half power is what root? Square roots, 2 roots. So, so the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3, so that makes it 12. And I'm not saying the calculator can't tell you that if you just type it straight in the right way the original problem is. But understanding what's going on there is going to help us 
when we have variables involved as well. So understanding that those properties out of there. So here would be exponential form. The 12 would be standard form. Exponential form, standard form. Standard form just means work it out. That's all that means. Uh, next property uh, is a negative exponent property. We, we actually talked about this one the other day. How do you make it a positive exponent? Yeah, the reciprocal. Move it to the bottom actually here so it's 1 over a to the m. And so you know, maybe if you had 36 to the negative 1 half, it becomes 1 over 36 to the 1 half. And remember, one half power is the square root. What's the square root of 36? 6. So this is really 1 sixth. So we have exponential form, standard form. Kai. So that we can work out problems that have fractions and exponents. And because everything doesn't work out to be nice, pretty numbers. Always. When you start trying to model real life situations with math, the numbers usually don't work out real pretty. Not not perfect, nice non-fraction answers, not perfect little uh, polynomials that always factor, that sort of thing. It doesn't always work that way. So we got to be able to handle well, what happens if it doesn't work that way. So uh, that's the fraction exponents is one of those things. It, it happens in, in, in modeling mathematics. So, that, so being able to do it... Um, Straightforward is much, much better to know how to do that before it happens. Okay, so let's get the next rule. Division. This one's used quite a bit. Uh, if multiplying was adding exponents, division would be subtracting them. Real simple idea. Uh, 4 to the 5 over 2. 4 to the 1 over 2. Real simple subtraction there. Uh, 5 minus 1 would be uh, 4. So we have 4 to the 4 over 2, which is actually 4 squared, would be 16. There we have exponential form and standard form. Out of that. That's when you have numbers. We're going to deal with some that have numbers and then some that don't have numbers and all that stuff. So it's going to take us some. Then you would get a common. can't do that then. There's nothing you can do to simplify that. It has to be the same base. So it's got to be 4 raised to something and 4 raised to something. X and X. You can't do two different ones. Good question. That, that, it's going to come up. So, uh, What if we got a fraction on the inside? Parentheses. Exponent on the outside. This one is almost identical to, to property number 2. It's just like distributed property. These have one exponents that are not written there. So it's a to the m or b to the m. Okay. Just takes that, distributes that exponent to both top and bottom. Okay. So like if you had 27 over 64, all raised to the one-third power. Well, that's like 27 to the one-third over 64 to the one-third. 27 to the, the cube root of 27 would be 3. The cube root of 64 would be 4. So exponent form, standard form. Out of that. You may be uh, tempted to grab the calculator and just let it do all this stuff for you, but you don't, you need to make sure that you're you know what's going on without the calculator uh, because the calculator is not going to express it in exponent form for you. It'll just do the standard form when, you, when it's numbers only and then it won't even do the variables. Okay, so if you want to pay attention to how we're doing this without a calculator, know that you can check it with the calculator and we'll talk about doing that because uh, I want you to know if you got it right or not. Uh, but understand that the form that you need to be able to write your answer in may need, may not equate to being able to do this with the calculator straightforward all the way through. Okay, so all right, so let's look at some examples of simplifying expressions. 
simplify. Yikes. That's interesting. I'm having trouble myself. So we're going to do both exponent form and standard form here just to kill two birds with one stone so we don't have to do a set of examples for exponent form, set of examples for standard form, just being able to do both of those, okay? All right, so uh, let's start with this one. Let's say we had 7 to the 1 fourth times 7 to the 1 half. So here's one uh, that has the same base, but the exponents are fractions. They have a different denominator. Uh, what's going on between them? The dot between them. Multiplying. multiplying. So what do you do with the exponents when you multiply things that have the same base? You add them up. Okay. So that'd be 7 to the 3 fourths power. Okay. Now this one doesn't work out real nice. If you do the standard form for that, it's going to be a nice ugly decimal out of that. Okay. So we're just adding those exponents there. Uh, we did that with the calculator. Three fourths, one half plus one fourth. So that part, yeah, you, I'd say you could do that with a calculator. I'd hope you wouldn't have to, but uh, one fourth plus one half, and then math enter enter. Exactly. Or even quarters. Yeah, when it's fourths and halves, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, so three-fourths is where that's coming from. So seven. Yeah, I, I don't do it with the calculator, I mean, honestly, because if you've read a tape before, those are easy. Now, when it's like thirds and sixths that are not on a tape, then it becomes a bit more difficult. But when it's quarters and halves and sixteenths and eighths, that's easy. Or, yeah, 30 seconds. So that would, uh, in standard form, be a, a estimated four point. Three zero. Well, if it asks for standard, okay, a lot of these are going to work out real uh, nice. This one just happens to not work out nice. Okay, so we're doing exponent form and then there's standard form. Exponent form just means not worked out numbers, standard form just means work out the numbers on there. Okay. Now, here's where. Uh, so if we got 6 to the 1 half times 4 to the 1 third, all in parentheses and squared. Here's where we run into some issues because can we add these two exponents? Why not? Different bases. So that, that, that property is not even on the table. All we've got to do is this property with the parentheses. What does the 2 do to that stuff? Distribute. So it's 2 times 1 half and 2 times 1 third. It's going to be the 6 to the... I'm going to write an extra step here to show that that's what happened. That I distributed the 2 to those fractions. 2 times a half is 2 over 2. Or 1. So 2 times 1. The base, the base doesn't change. Just, just the exponent. I'm just writing an extra step in there so that we see that 2 times 1 half. Because it may not work out to be a nice number every time. But they don't change. That's, that's right. I didn't. Two thirds. Is two, I didn't. I don't need a common denominator when I multiply. The rules for for fractions are: if you're adding, and subtracting, you gotta have common denominators. If you're multiplying, you don't. You just multiply. Okay. Top times top, bottom times bottom. So that's two over one times each of those. So that'd be six to the first power times four to the two thirds, right? And then, um, what could we do to make that a little better? Um, not a whole lot, actually. Yeah, if you if you did, you know, as a decimal equivalent of that, six times four raised to the two thirds. About the best you can do, 15.12. So exponent form is, 
is this, 6 times 4 to the 2 thirds, and then standard forms the number that that equals. Count. It does. It's a 1. We just don't write the 1 that's there. You're, you're welcome to write that 1. I'm not going to count off if you do, but I'm not going to count off if you don't either. Is it? Yeah, because you didn't reduce your fraction. You see, you got to reduce your fraction. Fractions have to be reduced. Well, it makes the rules. It is fractions. That's the rules of fractions that they teach the fourth graders, and and they they understand them and they follow them. All right, so this is where we start really getting into a little bit of manipulation of some numbers and this is probably where they said oh this is hard because i don't know what to do because it's not straightforward and an easy process every single time because every situation is going to be different it's kind of like life every situation is different so well no it's wonderful <laughs> you wake up on the brown side of the grass that's when it's not good that's all the grass right yeah. all right so now not my yard, my yard at my house all right, so here we have 4 to the 5th times 3 to the 5th, and then it's all raised to the negative 1 fifth. Now, there's a couple of different ways to think about this. One way would be what property does this exponent on the outside tell us to be? Distribute. So we're gonna, we would multiply negative 1 fifth to both of those. No. You can, but I, my philosophy in, in the exponents, and this is what I think makes it easier, is don't do anything with negative exponents until the very end. Multiply, you know, do all of the other properties first, then take care of your negative exponent last. If you do that, then it simplifies it a little bit, in my opinion. Legally, mathematically legal, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. But for sanity's sake, I think it helps if you just go ahead and do all the other properties and take other negative last. So when I multiply one negative one fifth times five, I get four to the negative one times three to the negative one. And then I'm gonna fix those because I can't do anything else to them, right? Because they're not the same base. I can't add those exponents. They're different bases, so that I can't do anything to that. So I can go ahead and flip it into one fourth times one third, which is one twelfth. Th that would be the mm -hmm. the flipping from here to here, negative one. So that's one over four to the first. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 over 3 to the positive 1 power. That would be the exponential form, honestly. We usually don't want to leave negative exponents in the answers. So since that one, they ended up being 1s, the exponent form is kind of in disguise because it's 1 exponents that you don't write. <laughs> let's look at some, <laughs> let's do some other. Uh, so let's, let's look at... Uh, Let's see, this one right here. 2 to the 6th times 4 to the 6th to the 2 thirds power. So one kind of kind of going to hit where Dalton's asking a question from. What do you do if that's like a positive one or something? So what property could we do here? It's so like that distributed property with x on. So we're going to say 2 thirds times 6 and then 2 thirds times 6 here. Okay, so that's going to give us 2 to the 4th power. Because 2 thirds of 6 is 4 times 4 to the 4th power. Which those are just numbers, right? So this would be exponential form. And we don't have to fix the negative exponents on this one. So we can go ahead and work out what's 2 to the 4th power. 16. 4 to the 4th power would be how much? 256. 
And then we could multiply that together. 4096. So exponential form, 2 to the 4th, 4 to the 4th. Standard form, 4096. Okay. Didn't get the 1 out of that, but the idea is the same, that if it doesn't have the negative exponent, you don't have to do anything to it to fix it. It's you know it's already okay. You don't have to fix anything. Let's do a division problem. It may take us a couple days to do this section. That's okay. There's a lot, a lot of properties here that wouldn't it just be one chart since you the fives cancel The fives don't cancel. Mm -hmm. This is five to the first power. This is five to the one third power. What's the rule for division? You minus the exponent. So what's one minus one third? Two thirds. So it's five to the two thirds power. The fives don't go away. And that would be exponential form. We could get that as a decimal with our calculator, five raised to the two thirds. 2.92. Let's look at this, this one. Another fraction problem. 42 to the one-third over 6 to the one-third, all squared. I'll show you. This is where I think maybe you know, your friends that are in uh, Coach Mack's class were, were saying that it, that it gets tough. Because this one, there's only really one way to work this. And now Jordan said, well, doesn't that become 7? It does, but you got to do something first. The key to being able to make that into a seven, that's the right thing to do. It's perfectly legal to do that. But look at these both have the one third power. So we could take that and manipulate that into 42 over six, all to the one third. So we, the two's still there. I'm just working on the inside right now. And I'm going to put the, the parentheses with the two outside on this as well. Can we see that this distributes to those and gives us this? Yeah. So we're like going in reverse. Like that property backwards is what we're using there to get to this. And then, as McKenna said, that, that does have the, the parentheses with the two outside. And then 42 over 6 can simplify because it's a fraction. Fractions, try, we try to simplify them if possible. So that's 7 to the one third squared, which would be 7 to the 2 thirds. And as a decimal, 7 raised to the 2 thirds would be 3.66 if we were looking for a decimal answer on that question. Exponential forms there. Though. Now, would you get there any other way? Not really. The key is, is like Jordan recognized, 42 and 6 common out of that. Now, the, the previous problem could have been done that way, but you end up doing the same calculation, 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3, to get there. Uh, so that's why I wouldn't do it that way. If the bases are already the same, you're complicating the game if you try to do it this way. Okay. Don't get them going. They're already, they were grappling when they came in. It's saying that you're. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Let's do another one that's similar to that. 20 to the 1 half over 5 to the 1 half. Four to the 1 half. That's right. 
and then that's still raised to the third. Yes, four to the three over two, which is three of eight. Yeah, you did that. With. As with an exponent, absolutely not. No mixed numbers. No mixed numbers. Period in algebra two. Ever. Like two and a half, or one. Like this one. The mixed number for one and one half, leave them improper, when, especially when you're dealing with exponents. If you started writing mixed numbers in that, it'd get just impossible to even read, probably, just because it gets so jumbled up. There's so much going on. Okay. All right. Now, let's take this same idea and incorporate it with the root stuff that we did yesterday. So remember that the roots that, or we did Friday, the root stuff that we did, those convert into fraction exponents. Okay, so like the cubed root of 12 times the cubed root of 18. Okay, and we want to simplify again. We're still simplifying the expression. Now, In Algebra 1, we did problems like this. Maybe square root of 5 times square root of 6. And square root of 30. So the rule is that if the, the radicals are the same, you just multiply the inside times the inside, outside times outside. Are the radicals the same here? Yes. Yes, so we can go ahead and multiply that as... Y'all saw my pen one anymore? I don't know. It's, it's been acting crazy today. So 12 times 18, 216. And then we want to simplify that, that root. Well, there's not anything on the outside. That that cube root is, is just, that, that's telling you what kind of radical you have. That's not a number that's on the outside. Okay, so we're going to do... 216, it came from 12 times 18, so I'm not going to have to struggle to find the numbers that do that. 4 and 3, 2 and 2. Or 6 and 8. And so the final answer would be 6, right? So without a calculator, we got a set of 3 2s and then a set of 3 3s. So that's 2 times 3, which is 6. And if you type that in the calculator, it turns out to be that as well. Okay. All right. Now, this one. Fourth root of 80 over the fourth root of 5. It's the same root on top and bottom. So this is kind of like that example, those last couple of examples we did earlier where we can kind of go in reverse and say, oh, well, that's the fourth root fourth root of 80 over 5. <laughs> Should be the fourth root of 16, which is 2. 80 divided by 5 is what 16 is. 5 goes into 8 one time, 3 left over into 30 six times, so that's 16. 80 divided by 5. And we're able to do that because this is the same radical. If this was cube root on top, Third root on the bottom, you can't do that. Two came from what's the fourth root of 16. Well, if one's a fourth root and one's a cube root, you can't you can't do that trick. They have to be the same root to be able to do that. If the root's not the same, you can't do that. All right. 
Now, this is where uh, these have worked out really nice numbers. 16 or 6 and then 2 here. That's that's great. What if it doesn't work out to be a nice flat number? No, that's not, not going to work. Okay, so let's look at one that maybe doesn't get there. Uh, maybe it's, it we'll just start with simplifying uh, the third root of 135. Now, what you want to do is break that 135 down like you were doing on Monday with the factor tree or like we did with square roots back in, in quadratics and things. You're going to break that 135 down the same way. I know a 5 goes into it uh, 27 times and then 27 is a 9 and a 3. A three and three. We're looking for a set of how many? Three. Where's that at? Three threes. Three comes out, cube root of five. This is what's left. I didn't pick five. It was there. It was what wasn't part of a set of three. That's that five that's there. I didn't just randomly pick a five. I picked 5 to go into 135 because it ended in a 5. I, I knew it had to go into it. Uh, I just didn't know where it comes from. I was just picking a number that I knew went into 135. If you started with a 9, that would work as well. It doesn't matter how you start your number. It's all about having a set of whatever index on your root there is. Okay? Let's look at... Um, To the cube root of 104. I'm going to break that down. So that's going to be what goes in 104. How much? 26 and 4. Okay, and 26 breaks down into 13 and 2. 4 is 2 and 2. So there's a set of three twos. So 2 comes out. Yeah, 2 cube root of 13. And you've simplified that. So this may be the easier, easy part right now. Well, we're going to combine this with addition and subtraction, that sort of fun stuff, uh, which isn't really that bad. You, you, don't well you should know the rules from here 2000 took every math we had here five of them. all right so uh let's let's get a division problem let's say we had the fifth root of Seven. Ah, never mind. Let's not do that. I forgot we don't. We're not going to do the division problem. We'll just scratch it out. Be okay. Let's do the fifth root of ninety-six. Okay, so let's break down 96. Doesn't matter which way you go. Six, four. So we're looking for sets of, of how many? Five. So one, two, three, four, five. Two. two. Three always has to be the end of one of your branches on your factory tree. Can never be something that broke apart. That's not a chapter. We'll have a quiz over section one and two Wednesday. Wednesday there'll be a quiz over one and two.
All right. Um, fourth root of 27 times the fourth root of 12. Mm -mm. I'm going to put them together first. Now, you don't have to multiply that together. I mean, you just got to know, hey, it's going to be the fourth root of whatever 27 times 12 is. And then you're going to break both of them down. To understand they're under one radical because they're both fourth roots. Yeah, I would. But I but understand they're going to be under one radical. Kyle? Couldn't do that. Can't do it. Okay, so are there enough twos for a two to come out? No. Radical four, because neither one of those twos came out, so they multiply back to seven on the inside. One, two, three, four. That's why the three came out. No, you, know, you don't want to. We did. I mean, it's here. It's two times two. There's a not enough twos to come out, so that's why it's staying in that. There has to be a set of four for something to come out with a fourth root. It's possible. There's quite a bit of stuff in this section. So. I see that. You see that? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's like right here, exactly. All right, so let's say we got the fourth root of 10 plus 7 times the fourth root of 10. So again, we're going to combine this with some addition, subtract, and kind of step you into it. Okay. In Algebra 1, we did this with square roots. All right, so here's 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 the thing that it's like. It's like adding x plus seven x, which is seven x plus one x is eight x. Add, folks. So say it would. So it would be this one. The ten radical or square root of ten plus seven radical ten would be eight radical ten. So this one would be eight fourth root of ten. Is that multiplication between them? No, I'm It's addition between them. That's why you wouldn't multiply them. Oh, my God. Okay, and then we want to see if that will simplify. There's not enough of them to come to bring anything out. Okay, so that's going to be our answer. Because they're indexes. They're, they're not uh, coefficients. Coefficients means numbers in front. The 8 came from 7 plus this 1. That's There's a 1 in front of there that's not written. That's, that's where that's coming from. So um, now we're, let's, let's look at this one. Maybe it's the cubed root of 54 minus uh, 6 cubed root of 2. Okay. So it's kind of stepping us into it here. The first one, it was already simplified for you. Now we got to simplify the cube root of 54 and then possibly the cube 6 cube root of 2. Uh, so 54, it's a bigger number, so I'm going to assume it breaks down, right? All right, should be 3 cube root of 2. That's very much true. That'd be 9 times 6. Of going through all the motions to get here. So there's a set of three. So that's where this is three cube root of two minus six cube root of two. The cube root of two, this one doesn't simplify any. This two doesn't break down, right? Now I have the same radical on both of those. I've got a cube root and a cube root. So that becomes 3 minus 6, which is negative 3 
cube root of 2. I don't know why I left a little space there, but it shouldn't be. Negative 3 cube root of 2 is the final answer for that. One. Is this going to be another one of those lessons where you go to the Greek letters? I don't know if I'll get that far. It's 2.23. We got 40 or 37 minutes left, so I don't think I'll get that far. All right. <coughs> All right, so let's look at um, let's look at this one. 2 parentheses 8 to the 1 fifth power plus 10 parentheses 8 to the 1 fifth power. This looks super complicated, but it's no different. Yeah, 12, 8 to the 1 fifth. That's it. It's that simple. It looks really bad, but it's not. Okay. Yeah, you couldn't say eight only breaks down into three twos. That's not enough to come to simplify with the fifth root. So, yeah, can't do that. No, because the twelve's not got the exponent on it. Only the eight does. So you don't need to break down the twelve at all. And you can't divide them by two because uh, there's nothing that it, you know. You're not equal to anything else. You're just all simplifying a, an expression. Okay. Um, Let's look at this one. Cubed root, or let's do it this way. Five to the one third. Uh, five to the one third plus 40 to the one third. That looks weird. Looks a little more complicated than example B because it's got a different number in the parentheses. The exponent's on a different number for each one. So what that makes me think is maybe that 40 breaks down some. Because what what are we really dealing with when we're dealing with the one-third power is we're dealing with the cube root. Two comes on the outside, five on the inside. Is that what you're saying? That's true. Because we got a set of three twos. That's a two, cube root of five. And then we've got the, you know, or it's actually cube root of five plus two, cube root of five, which is three, cube root of five. But if we're going to write it in the form that the original problem was written in, be 3 to times 5 to the 1 third. Both of those are correct. All right, so what we did is we changed the 1 third power to cube roots because it makes it look more familiar. Maybe. Why, why wouldn't it just be like 45 and 30? Because these are exponents, and order of operations says that exponents happen before addition and subtraction does. Oh, so, you have to go by that so, well, you always have to go by that. I've had to go by it since since we started doing more than one operation at a time. Exponents always come before addition and subtraction, so we've got to simplify that exponent part before we can add and subtract. Say it again. Simplify any piece that can be simplified. That's what you want to do. If it's under a radical or it's got an exponent on it, think about simplifying it every single time. If you'll do that, it makes it easier. Now, where it gets a little bit more complicated is when they start throwing the letters in there. And that, let's just look at some of those. Well, then you still got a quiz Wednesday. So if we, uh, all right. 
So we have a cube root of 64 y to the 6. Okay. Now, this is how I try to do the ones that have variables inside. Is I try to think about it as a fraction exponent. I think it makes it easier. Okay. That that would be 64 y to the 6th to the one third power. And then I think about, okay, that's 64 to the one third and y to the sixth to the six times one third would be two. One third of six is two. I'm using exponent properties. Multiplying, you know, this, this is what this turns into. And then I can multiply the 64 to the first times the one third is 64 to the one third. Six times a third is two. No, it's sixty. It's the same thing as the cube root is sixty-four. <laughs> yeah, I'm so done. <laughs> so break down the cube root of sixty-four. We have one, two, twos. So that's four. Four y squared. The y, y is not inside of a cube root anymore because it multiplied one third times six, gave me a nice whole number. So I don't have any fraction exponents anymore. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so let's say we had um, cube root of twenty seven P to the third Q to the twelfth. So let's put a, another number in there, but it, the idea is the same. The, the you know, we got a cube root, we got variables in there. What what exponent does that turn into? One third. one third. Cube root is one third. Then follow your exponent properties. It says, oh, I can just distribute this one third to each exponent. So that makes it 27 to the one third. P to the first, because three times one third is one. What's 12 times one third? Four, so it's Q to the fourth. We're getting to simplify those fractions as we go, and we're getting rid of some of them, which is a good thing. And now we just need to think, okay, what's the cube root of 27? Three. If you, if you need to break down the 27 to prove that, this is how it's done. Let's say we had um, all right, so we're still simplifying here. I, th I personally think the frac the ones that have variables in it are easier because you don't have to worry about breaking a number down. You just got to worry about working with the fraction and the exponent. So fourth root becomes what fraction exponent? One fourth. So this is m to the fourth over n to the eighth to the one fourth power. Fourth root is one fourth power. That's that's the conversion that we talked about on Friday. All right, now 
Dis distributed property with the exponent one fourth times four. So would that be four over four? It would be yeah, four over four, which is one. Eight over four, which is two. So it's m over n squared is what it simplifies to be. It's not. It, if you know your exponent properties and know how to work with fractions, it's not. It is. It's it very. It's it's all going toward. It's it's like the, the you mean like scientific notation. It, that's that's what it's like. That scientific notation is exponent stuff. So that's what this is. And we wonder why we're confused. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> All right, so we have one fifth power because it's a fifth root. What do you mean? No, because no. different bases. All right, so then one fifth times ten would be two. One fifth of five is. One, so it's x squared over y. Yeah. I that's what I'm saying. I don't know, somebody said that earlier. I don't know who it was. Uh, depends on what mood I'm in. What letters I'm going to use. All right, so let's go to one that's a little bit more. All right, so here, when we're, when we're working with one of these, we want to simplify everything we can and then get a... Uh, any negative exponents need to be turned to positive at the end. Okay, so we want to simplify anything that can be simplified and then then uh, so fix might, any negative exponents. So we might as well just go ahead and get rid of that negative six instead of one over six. No, it's not one over six. <laughs> it's z to the negative six, so the z would go to the top to make it positive six. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to do this, and you guys can pay attention if you want to, or not. I don't really. I'm I'm done. It's division. The bases are the same on the x's. So x to the first and x to the three-fourths, one minus three-fourths would be one-fourth, right? That's a positive exponent. And then the y, there's not a y in the bottom, so I don't do anything to it. It just stays up there in the top. Now the z to the negative six is down here, but I want to fix the negative exponents. The way to fix them is to move them from wherever they are when they're negative to either the numerator or denominator, the opposite of where they're at. So if this is in the denominator, if I move it to the numerator, it becomes a positive exponent. That's what that rule does. Okay? So that creates this as a final answer for that. There's nothing we can do to simplify that those fraction exponents on those letters at all. Uh, sometimes they, we can if it's numbers, but if it's letters, there's really not much we can do about that. And we just leave that there. Um, Let's say we had this one, 6xy to the 3 fourths over 18x uh, to the 1 half, y to the 1 half. It's just, that's it. So what does the 6 over 18 reduce to be? One third. So nothing's different about that 
those numbers didn't have exponents on them, so we don't have to worry about doing anything with that. We just do normal fraction work with the 6 and the 18 because they don't have exponents. If they had exponents, then I need to do that first. This is order of operations says parentheses, exponents, then multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay. So if they had exponents, I need to do that first. Now I have x to the first power and x to the one half. They're dividing, so I do what? Subtract. So one minus one half would be positive or negative? Positive. And then we have y to the three fourths and y to the one half. Three fourths minus two fourths is one fourth, positive or negative? Y to the one fourth. And that's my answer. Nothing else I can do to that. Let's see. Let's do uh, fifty six A B to the three fourths over 7, a to the 5, 6, c to the negative 3. a to the 5 over 6 in the denominator, c to the negative 3, x, let's go ahead and put b in the bottom of the web, just, just to make it more interesting. So that we see, well, so that we can see something happening here that hasn't happened on one already. And we're about to move on to the next kind of problem. So, last kind of problem. Maybe that's a better way to put it. I just figured it would. Okay, 56 over 7 is going to reduce to be an 8. Good. All right, so we got 8 of the first power up top and 8 of the 5 over 6 on the bottom. A to the one six. You subtract. It's division. Division with exponents. You subtract. Then we have b to the three fourths and b to the first. Kylie. Oh. To the one sixth. Yeah. It's a one. So there's nothing there. It's a one. 1 minus 5 over 6 is 1 over 6. That's where that's coming from. 3 fourths minus 1 is negative 1 fourth. So I put it on the bottom and make it pop. It was negative 1 fourth. Put it on top and make it pop. Want to end up with all positive exponents. Never want to end up with negative exponents in your answer. Want to end up with positive exponents only. Okay. Say that again. <laughs> on the B, yeah, three-fourths yeah. minus one, one, one would be three-fourths minus four over four, oh, okay. which is oh, one okay. over four. See, that's why I get this And, you know, there's nothing to say you can't type, the, you know, three-fourths minus one in your calculator and get, get that, you know, it'll spit out a, a fraction on that if you want it to. All right. Okay, let's look at... Um, All right. <coughs> Excuse me. One fifth square root of W plus three fifths square root of W. I've already done one like this, just kind of throwing in some fractions. Four fifths. Square root of W. Nothing fancy about that one. Example Z. Three X Y to the one fourth minus eight X Y to the one fourth. Are those like terms? 
What's it take to be a like term? Same letter and same exponent on those letters. Both of them have an X to the first. So, so yes, they are like terms. It would be negative 5 X Y to the 1 fourth. Because they're like terms. Twelve cubed roots of two z to the fifth minus z cubed roots of fifty four z squared. All right, so Cameron's doing it here kind of quietly. I can hear telling me what to do. You want to simplify. Because remember, if we're going to add or subtract things, they got to have the same radical and same stuff inside that radical, right, to put them together. So this one has 2z to the fifth. It's inside of the cube root. So that tells me that the z to the fifth should simplify. How many times will 3 go into 5? One time with 2 <laughs> left over. Okay, so one z is going to come out. Is that, z squared or z squared? that is z squared. And then the cube root of two z squared now on the inside. Okay, five over three would be you know one and two thirds or two fifths or two thirds. Excuse me, one and two thirds. That's that two right there. How many times is three going to five? One time, so that's one Z comes out, and then two left over, so that's the two left inside, left over. Okay. Now, 54 breaks down to 27 times two, or it did uh, nine times six. You know, it doesn't matter how you do that. Either way, you're getting the cube root of, 20, of 27 would be three. So a three is gonna come out, does three go into two? No. So no Z's are going to come out. There's already a Z out there, and a three's coming out there with it. So it'll be three Z cube root of two Z squared. Works out to where the radicals are the same. So the radicals don't cancel out. We can do the math in front. Twelve minus three equals 9z cube root of 2z squared. We're adding subtracting so the exponents don't change. Yes, ma'am. The 54 breaks down to 27 and 2, 9 and 3, 3 and 3. So there's a set of three threes. So that's this 3 that came out to the front. The two that's left over is this two right here. That's that two that's still inside. That's how the 54 went away. So tomorrow you're going to get to work on this stuff, okay? You got about 13 minutes left in class today. You got tonight if you want to work on some of it tonight. Uh, and then tomorrow, come in, get your questions answered. Uh, get a little bit more familiar with the material. Uh, quiz Wednesday over 6-1 and 6-2. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, tomorrow we're just doing this.